In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to a process cost system, looking at test taking skills as we go. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. First question, the costs of direct labor and factory overhead per equivalent unit is called A, total cost per equivalent unit, B, overhead cost per equivalent unit, C, direct cost per equivalent unit, D, useless cost number, <laughs> E, conversion cost per equivalent unit. So we'll go through this again, see if we can use the process of elimination to narrow this down. The costs of direct labor and factory overhead per equivalent unit is called. So we got the direct labor factory overhead. Remember when we think about the costs of inventory anytime, usually we have material, uh, labor, and overhead. Material, labor, and overhead. Now we're combining those two items, labor and uh, overhead. So we're kind of thinking, well, what could be the same about those two? which not is the same about possibly the materials as we go through, maybe they keep that in mind. A, total cost per equivalent unit. So total cost per equivalent unit. Uh, the cost of direct labor and overhead, we might keep that for now, but it seems like it's missing something because it doesn't have the materials possibly. So then B says overhead, overhead cost per equivalent unit. And so it's got, it's got overhead, but it's also got the, the labor, the cost for labor, and overhead per equivalent unit so it seems like it can't just be overhead because it's got both of them i'm going to cross that out c says uh, direct cost per equivalent unit and so the direct costs are usually the materials and the labor not not the uh overhead overhead is indirect that's why it's in that's why it's an overhead so overhead is going to be typically indirect typically so it's not generally the direct costs and then D says useless cost number. You know, I mean, they're probably not going to ask a question about a. Maybe they just maybe just made up a term uh, and said here's a useless number, but probably not. And then E says conversion cost per equivalent unit. So conversion costs. That sounds like it could be something. So we'll keep it with A and E and go through it again. The costs of direct labor and factory overhead per equivalent unit is called either A total cost per equivalent unit or E conversion cost uh, per equivalent unit and of those two note that th if we think about the three factors material labor and overhead material is the thing that we are converting the labor and the overhead are the things that we use to convert the material from raw material to the finished good uh the inventory product so that's going to be so e is going to be the one we really want because that's going to be the conversion it's not not the, the total cost per equivalent unit because again it's missing the materials so we'll go with e final answer the cost of direct labor and factory overhead per equivalent unit is called e con conversion cost per equivalent unit next question using conversion cost per equivalent unit is often necessary because a direct materials and direct labor happen at the same point b all costs happen at the same point c equivalent cost per unit does not include conversion costs d that's just how it's done e uh, direct labor and factory uh, often direct labor and factory overhead happen at the same rate so let's go through this again using the process of elimination using conversion cost per equivalent unit is often necessary because so we're going to think about this use of conversion cost. Now, when we think about conversion costs, we saw this in the prior uh, the prior question, which is also a test taking skill you might want to use. Note, if you go through a full test of multiple choice questions, uh, some questions will actually answer themselves, which is nice. So you might be able to go back and kind of actually piece something together. But the conversion costs, note that if we think about the types of things that go into inventory, 
We're talking about material, we're talking about labor, we're talking about overhead. The material is the thing we're converting, the labor, the overhead then are the conversion factors, those are the conversion costs. So we're, def we're considering then uh, the labor and the overhead typically when we're considering conversion costs. So using conversion costs per equivalent unit, per equivalent unit is often necessary because A, direct materials and direct labor happen at the same point. So direct materials, so we might think hmm, maybe, kind of, but really we buy the materials before the labor. So I would think it would go materials and then labor, but I'll keep that one for now. And then B says all costs happen at the same point. Well, that's, I can't really be right because, I mean, we have to buy the materials and then we have to do the labor and then we, you know, so nah, probably not happening all at the same time. It's a process. It's a process cost system. C, equivalent cost per unit does not include conversion costs. So equivalent cost per unit does not include conversion costs. That doesn't seem right, but I'll keep it for now. D says that's just how it's done. Um... That's probably not an appropriate answer. We'd like more detail than that. So, and then E says, direct labor and factory overhead happen at the same rate. So that uh, seems like, man, maybe it could be that. And notice, if we look at A and E, they look very similar. Direct materials and direct labor happen at the same point, the same point in time, versus direct labor and direct material uh, overhead happen at the same rate. So they're not exactly the same. It would be it would be more the same if they were all the same except for this last kind of word. But the fact that they're worded somewhat similarly and different than all the other answers might mean that th that would be more of the correct answer. So that might make us look at C and say, hmm, can I eliminate C? Equivalent cost per unit does not include conversion cost. It d doesn't seem right because if we're talking equivalent cost per unit, we're trying to estimate all the costs. Or, you know, we're trying to estimate the costs that have been done so far which would include the materials and whatever conversion has happened up to this point so it, so it, it doesn't if it said it didn't include all conversion costs maybe right but, but doesn't seem like that would be it so let's keep it between a and e go through it again using conversion costs per equivalent unit is often necessary because a direct material and direct labor happen at the same point or e direct labor and factory overhead happen at the same rate now, also, we might think it's E because we're talking about labor and overhead, which are the conversion costs. So just that would probably have us think, meh, it's probably going to be E because we're talking about the things that are conversion costs as opposed to anything else. And they happen at the same rate. And that would basically mean that we can kind of group them together. And so when we do some estimates, we, we have three things that we're talking about. Materials, labor, uh, we're talking about the materials, and then we're talking about the labor and the overhead. We kind of group the overhead and the labor as one thing, conversion costs. And we could say, well, because they kind of happen at the same rate, that, and, and therefore that we could do that. We can group them together if that's the case. And two, it might be the case that the, the labor is fairly low in cost because uh, w when you have something that we're producing in a process cost system, it might be all mechanical in essence if we're just making... Some, you, can, you can imagine an automated assembly line making taffy or something like that at all. There might not be a whole lot of labor, and therefore uh, we can kind of group them together because of the immaterialness or the, the, the smallness of the labor compared to the overhead possibly. But in any case, we're going to go to E. And so the answer, using conversion costs per equivalent unit is often necessary because E, direct labor and factory overhead, happen at the same rate.